In a previous project, I built this infinity mirror. My ultimate goal for it was to make it into a clock, but there were a few things with the design that I didn't like. For this project, I have gone through a redesign and connected it to an Arduino, making it a clock. Before starting, I want to mention a couple of things. For this video, I will not be commenting step by step. I tried to edit the video to be mostly straightforward. There will be some places where I do comment for clarity. If you would like a more detailed description of each of the steps, I will be making a post on Instructables of the process. I will have a link in the description of this video when that Instructable is online. Also, while building this project, there were a few times that the video footage either didn't record or it got lost. If there are any steps that are unclear, please leave a comment. If I cannot explain it better with a quick reply, I will try to create a supplementary video focusing on that step and post it on my second channel. Now onto the build. This is a part where I lost the footage. I built this framing with two layers. The second layer of the framing has the pieces glued to the first layer, but in an alternated direction. This gives the joints of the framing more strength. I also cut the individual pieces a little bit longer. This let me sand them down to a perfect fit. The LEDs that I used here are individually dressable and they're from an LED strip. The reason that I'm attaching them individually instead of as a strip is because I wanted them to be closer together than they were as a strip. This did make a lot more work for me, but the results were worth it. In the future, I will be looking into a better option for customizing the distance between LEDs. Right here I'm just test fitting the three wires in each of the grooves that I carved so that I can carve the grooves wider where necessary. When bending the wires around the wood frame, you need to be careful. If you just try to wrap them around, they will move the LED out of alignment. To prevent this, I apply pressure to the copper pads with my thumb and bend each of the wires one by one in the direction they need to go. Now I can wrap them around the wood framing.
Now that all of the LEDs are wired up, let's test it out. I just use a regular LED controller for this. Apparently only about half of the LEDs are lighting up. After disconnecting the power and looking closer, I can see that on one of the LEDs, the copper pad for the data connection is damaged. After replacing that LED, I test again, and everything is working now. The distance between these marks is 67 millimeters. I drill a 1 inch hole at each of these marks. From the other side, I mark a 30 degree angle that I will be cutting out. I have this wooden block with a 150 degree angle to help me bend the pieces. I made two of these pieces for the aluminum framing, then taped them together. I positioned the opening joints of each to be opposite from one another. I did not want the weakness of one joint to affect the other joint. I used this epoxy putty to hold the joints together and to fill the gaps at each of the corners. When cutting the plastic after tracing the frame's shape onto it, you need to cut a bit on the inside of the line to adjust for the thickness of the aluminum frame. You also need to do the same when cutting the sheet metal. I took some of these long nuts and reshaped them a bit. With the bolts holding them in place, I use some more of the same epoxy to secure them in place. After that epoxy finished setting, I remove the bolts holding them in place and add in more epoxy to the sides of the nuts to give them more support. To remove the excess epoxy here after it's set, I used this grinding bit. At the top of the plastic and the sheet metal, I have already removed a notch for the wires. Now I need to remove notches for the mounting nuts.
now is a good time to polish the sheet metal, but I won't go through the process here. I have already made a video that goes through that whole process, so feel free to check that video out. And here it is after being polished. Just out of curiosity, I want to test something out. I'm applying some of my reflective film to half of this surface to see how the results compare to the polished metal surface. The reflective film will be on the top half of the clock. Now you're probably wondering what this thing is for. I'm going to use this bolt to press on the middle of the sheet metal so that it warps the infinity effect towards the center. My With the frame painted, it's time to put it all together. Before I clamp the sheet metal into place, I need to make one more addition. I added some pieces of plastic to go in between the LEDs and the sheet metal. I don't want them to short out. I'm using an Arduino Nano, and I have two touch switches to help me set the time. Notice how over tightening the bolt here causes the sheet metal to warp. If that's the effect you're going for, then that's cool. But if you don't want that type of warping, just loosen it a bit. You can still get the inward curve with just a little bit of pressure. My heart rages around like an ocean in my head. And that's it. This project ended up being a lot more time consuming for me than I originally planned, so I may have missed some things. If there are any steps that need more detail, leave a comment and let me know. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I will make supplementary videos with more detail if needed and upload them to my second channel. I will also create a playlist on this channel with any supplementary videos and add a link to that playlist in the description of this video.